Welcome to another video in my series where we're going through every single weapon in Modern Warfare 3 to see just how viable these weapons are inside of your Modern Warfare 3 Zombies games. This is going to include the aftermarket parts and conversion kits as well as the MW2 weapons. Now for Season 3 Reloaded, they have brought us a brand new Dark Ether Rift. And inside that Dark Ether Rift is where you're going to find your new schematics, the Deadwire Detonators, the Sergeant's Beret, and uh, the uh, golden gas mask filter. So by completing the new dark ether, there is a hidden boss fight at the end after you manage to complete all the contracts. And if you're able to complete the boss fight at the end, it unlocks the Ram 7 smoke signals blueprint that you're looking at on screen. And this is the build that comes with the blueprint that you are given. And I think the uh, camo on here just looks absolutely amazing. Like it's so cool to see. So this is how uh, the weapon you get for unlocking it and completing the boss fight in the new Dark Ether. Now today we're going to be looking at the crossbow from MW2, which is the weapon I use as a support weapon when I go into the Dark Ether. And uh, so this is the complete run from start to finish in the Dark Ether, including the new boss fight. So let's go check it out using the new crossbow from MW2. So without further ado, let's get off to the new Dark Ether. All right, so welcome in to the Season 3 Reloaded brand new Dark Ether. Now, this is just a regular sigil run. Um, this was one of the first times I was doing the new Dark Ether, so we didn't want to do an Elder Sigil as we weren't exactly sure on how to complete everything in uh, a quick amount of time. So I'm running with a good friend of mine, uh, Shine Quiet. Uh, links for their streams will be down below in the description. Um, but this was a good fun, and we start off and head to the left is our first contract that we go and pick up inside of the Dark Ether. And it is the uh, bounty contract is the first one we do. So we go off and pick up our bounty contract and get that activated. Um, Shy and Quiet is running over and going and grabbing the contracts and uh, getting them activated for me. As I'm running support this run, so I've got my Aether Blades um, and the dead wire detonators on the crossbow with the explosive bolts. Uh, stick through to the end of the video. We do have the build for the crossbow there for you guys if you're looking for it. Um, so here we are grabbing our first um, bounty contract and first contract of the Dark Ether, which is the Mega Abomination. And just so you guys know, I know I have a Jug Suit equipped, but inside this brand new Dark Ether, you are not unable to call in your Jug Suit. So uh, keep that in mind if you're going into the Dark Ether and you're expecting to drop your Jug Suit to help out with the bounty contract. Uh, you cannot call in your jug suit so we were dealing with our mega abomination here we brought in a lot of casimirs and uh, monkey bombs and other tacticals to help keep the riffraff away from us so we can focus on our contracts here uh, so we're just dealing damage away to the mega abomination i'm trying to just deal damage and crowd control and help out and complete this contract as quick as we can uh, we were trying to see how well we could do it so Grab another Casimir here and throw it. I mean, you can see the chaos down here. There's just so much going on right now. There's mimics, there's dogs, there's manglers, there's zombies, there's our mega abomination around. Uh, it's it's absolutely insane in here. And I, I truly enjoy it. Like this um, Dark Ether to me is definitely one of the most challenging ones they've brought to us inside of MW3 Zombies. And I really do enjoy the challenge um, that this Dark Ether brings. So let me know down in the comments below if you guys have gone into the Dark Ether, if you've completed it, and if you have all three of the brand new schematics. Uh, I do have all three of them, the Dead Wire Detonators, the Sergeant's Beret, and uh, the Golden Gas Mask Filter. So we are off to get our second uh, contract here, and <laughs> my jump off of the edge there did not work out at all. So here I am. Like I said, this was one of my first times in the Dark Ether. Uh, so what you're looking at is footage of me still not exactly knowing my way around the dark ether here. So some of the times during this uh, <laughs> gameplay today, I do look a little bit lost. And that's because it's, like I said, it's one of my first times uh, in the dark ether here, this footage. So now we're going to be going down and doing our Outlast, the PND contract. And this is the second one we do. And uh, the reason why we do this is because the escort contract is one we do last. And uh, the escort contract... If you do it last, it ends up um, close toward where you need to be to do the secret boss fight inside of this Dark Ether. So that's the reason why we do the order, uh, the contracts in the order that we do. So we do Bounty first, we do PND second, and then, then we do our Escort last. And then it's off to the secret boss fight. So this PND here is absolutely insane, but you can see this crossbow with the, uh, the, the sorry, explosive bolts and dead wire detonators. 
is just absolutely amazing to use as a support weapon inside of this new brand new Dark Ether. It, it handles so much crowd control um, for you guys inside of Dark Ether. I would definitely recommend that if you guys are going into the Dark Ether as a crew, um, that one of you, you know, runs a crossbow or the RGL with dead wire detonators so that you guys can have some crowd control in here to just deal with the, the sheer amount and volume of enemies that are going to be coming at you constantly while you're in here. So definitely um, very strong for a support weapon, this crossbow for sure. And I think it's, you know, definitely one of the most enjoyable weapons. Like I was having a blast using this, just absolutely blowing up everything in sight, just constant explosions everywhere. It's super fun to use. I really did enjoy it. Now, during this PND, we managed, I managed to find a lot of tacticals from the elites and the HPTs that we were killing during the PND contract. So I found Kazmiers, I found Monkey Bombs. So just continue to pick those up. If you see them on the ground, throw them just to make things easy for you guys while you're doing the PND contract. So there we have completed the second one. I got Deadwire Detonators and Epic Tool and Napalm Burst. So I just grabbed the Deadwire Detonators and we are off to go and grab our last contract, which was the Escort. And the reason we do it in this order, as you can see here, the PND finishes there. And if you just head this way, straight down and to the left, after the PND contract, you'll be able to climb up, grab the zip line, and head over to where the escort contract is. So this is what we did. We've gone over here. Giant Quiet is booking it ahead of me to try and climb up there and get these contracts started as quick as possible. Um, we weren't sure about how long it was going to take to complete the hidden boss fight as we hadn't done it before. So we were just kind of in a rush to try and knock out these uh, contracts as quick as we possibly could to get them uh, done and uh, ready for the hidden boss fight. So here we are, Shai's picking up the uh, escort contract right there. I'm providing, you know, support and crowd control so Shai and the other player can go ahead and grab the uh, contract, which is definitely something that was important. Then there was the uh, foot from there, but I had no room in my backpack, uh, so Shai turned around and picked that up for us because it'll give you uh, an ability where if you have kill and highlighted enemy, you'll drop a nuke, which definitely helps out for the escort step for sure. Now to go ahead and get the escort started as we had a whole bunch of riffraff coming at us, I put out a, a Casimir grenade just to get the escort machine started. And you can see here, neither one of us um, on this escort uh, are running the VR-11. Um, so it is definitely something that you can, can complete in a regular uh, sigil. A regular elder run um, you can do the escort and you won't need to bring in the vr11 for sure obviously bringing in the vr11 for an escort makes it just you know that much easier as you can com maintain the acv's health at 100 percent for sure but i mean you can see here with the crowd control i was able to do with the uh explosive bolt crossbow and the nukes that were getting picked up from uh, the highlighted enemies that we were killing, we were definitely able to complete the escort contract here in the new Dark Ether, and we don't have a VR-11, so it's just a, you know, constant communication, you know, work together as a team when you guys are in here, so that if someone's throwing a Casimir, monkey bomb, or a decoy, or what have you, that you guys aren't double throwing them and wasting them. So just, you know, work together, communicate in here. Um, if you run out of ammo on your crossbow, good news, you can just drop down and pick up ammo off the ground. You don't have to refill it from an ammo cache. So that is truly awesome to just run around and do that. Make sure your plates are on. I would recommend you bring in at least one century to throw on the ACV. It definitely helps um, make this a little bit easier for sure. But you can see here, like, we don't have a VR-11 and we are definitely able to handle the crowd control inside of this Dark Ether on a regular run. Like this isn't an Elder Sigil run for sure, so it's just a regular Sigil run. So it's definitely not as, um, you know, action-packed as the Elder run would be for sure. However, having said that, it, this is definitely one of the most challenging Dark Ethers personally that I find in the game. Let me know in the comments which one of the Dark Ether rifts that you guys feel is definitely one of the ch most challenging ones in the game. I'd love to find out which one you guys uh, are finding to be the most challenging for sure. Um, so we're here almost at our last stop for the ACV. Also, don't forget guys, in the new Dark Ether, the escort contract has four stops, not three. So you're gonna have to defend the ACV four times while it stops and uh, does its thing at each portal so make sure you guys are prepared for that and understand that after three you're not done you got to get to four so we finished off that location there moving on i'm making sure i'm keeping up my ammo on my uh, explosive crossbow so that i can continue to provide the crowd control for giant quiet who's running around and trying to deal with all the elites and other stuff like that 
but I really do enjoy and the look I, I, I found that this dark ether is probably visually for me anyway one of their better looking dark ether areas I think it looks really cool the skybox being like out in space and like in the sky and stuff is really cool I think it's just an awesome looking skybox myself personally um, but here we are on to our almost last location this is the third stop on the ACV that's at the gas station here it's always at the gas station here so you can uh, you know know the route a little bit here by checking out this video and again it's a matter of working together to make sure that we are not putting out decoys um, casimirs or monkey bombs at the same time so just make sure you guys are working in tandem working in communication with each other so you're letting each other know hey I'm throwing out a casimir or you know casimir out monkey bomb out stuff like that just so players and your team knows what's going on so you guys aren't wasting your tactical so if you bring in a bunch as a team you should be able to complete this um, for sure uh, not a problem without using a VR11 as long as you guys are using teamwork make sure you're communicating um, so that you guys are knowing what's going on and this is where I mentioned you definitely want to have <laughs> your A game right here for the last stop of the ACV Escort. This section here on the bridge is absolute craziness, pure chaos down here. Uh, it's a very tight space, a ton of zombies spawn, and this is the final location. You can see our ACV is doing all right. I think we're at 66% uh, health or 86% health, I'm not exactly sure. Um, but definitely it was this was definitely one of the craziest stops for sure um, The last stop of the ACV is definitely absolutely nuts. There is so much the stuff that shows up here um, You'll see it's not so bad right now But you'll see right at the end when we go and try and visit the reward rift from completing the ACV contract It was absolutely just insane. There's just so much stuff right here So you can see we had the ACV at 61% which is pretty darn good considering we didn't have a VR11 to do this and it was just um, the crossbow providing the crowd control and trying quiet running around trying to deal with the elites to get us the um, nuke so that we can clear out the riffraff. Now there we got the contract complete so you can see definitely got it done and in order to even have a chance to do the boss fight, the hidden boss fight in the new Dark Aether, you do have to complete all three contracts. So be wary of that and make sure you've completed all three. Um, if you don't complete all three, you won't be able to shoot the spores. So that's definitely something for you guys to take note of. <laughs> there is so much stuff on the ground by the reward rift that I was just having the worst time trying to get a hold of that reward rift. We got two perks out of that and a self revive, which I grabbed the self revive because that's definitely something that I felt would be needed, you know, inside of the dark ether as it's a little bit insane right now. So then you jump off the bridge here and just head the direction we do. And you're going to want to shoot these red spores and they show up um, like i said if you've completed all three contracts so that's the first one right there go ahead and shoot them until they destroy and then you want to move on there's going to be three of them for you to shoot so you want to come through here and then you head off to our second one which is just down here and then to the left that's our big one at the end but you have to destroy all the uh, other spores first before you can destroy the final one so that's our second one there and then we're going to head off and destroy the final spore here to trigger the uh i guess the the queen spore i don't know what to call it <laughs> but it, you shoot these three ones you destroy all these three ones and then you're able to go back in and destroy the final one the fourth spore which is the huge huge spore you saw in the middle here and you can see like the riffraff and this is just absolutely insanity in here it's so much chaos so this is the, uh, what is it, Spore Heart, Rift Heart. So you want to go ahead and destroy that after you've destroyed the other three spores in the area. That'll allow you to finish off the Rift Heart, which is going to spawn in a Disciple Boss. And the Disciple Boss here, you're going to be able to damage it right off the hop. Um, and then when the boss health goes to a gray bar, you're not going to be able to damage it anymore. He's going to spawn in a bunch of elites that are extra beefy and they are going to act like his shield. So you're going to want to take out these elites here. Um, you can see with the little skull icon above their heads, you want to finish all of them off so that then the disciple takes down his shield and you can damage him again see here we are uh, trying to deal with all of the riffraff and the absolute sheer chaos that is the dark ether for season three reloaded which i absolutely love i mean this is just absolutely insanity and it's just so much fun i was having a blast just absolutely blasting everything in my sights 
with this uh, explosive tip crossbow. It was just so much fun. Honestly, give it a shot if you guys haven't. This is really fun. I think you guys will really enjoy it. And I, like I said, there's a good reason I picked up that saw for Vive because we went down there and you can see the four extra strength elites that the disciple has spawned in for us to take care of. So we're going to deal with these four and then you're going to be able to just damage the disciple. But again, you can't damage that disciple if you see the health bars gone gray. You're going to have to shoot the HVTs that he's spawned in with extra health. So you want to take care of the four of them. Um, and then you can go back and continue damaging the, the, the disciple. So if you see the disciple and you, you're firing shots and nothing's happening, don't panic. Go and try and find uh, the two HPTs or four HPTs or the HPT that's left that the disciple spawned in. And then you can go ahead and do that. And then you can see the disciple will turn his health bar to red. And then you can go ahead and just absolutely lay into the disciple to make sure that you finish that off. There you go. We got that one done. And you can see the blueprint unlock pops up on screen. And so that is the boss fight for the brand new Dark Ether, the hidden boss fight. Again, to unlock the boss fight, you need to complete all three contracts inside of the Dark Ether successfully in order to be able to shoot those three spores to unlock the Rift Heart score. And you can see the reward rift here was a bit of a challenge to get to, for sure. Um, we got an Elder Sigil in there, and I got the uh, gas mask. Um, golden gas mask filter out of that so not too bad but definitely an awesome run for sure we really enjoyed this um, we're really surprised actually how quick we were able to knock this out um, we we 1458 was when we started head to exo so we might actually be able to finish this in an elder sigil run do all three contracts and the hidden boss fight inside of an elder sigil run i'm not sure because the elder sigil only gives me 15 minutes so definitely not too sure about that. But I wanted to thank all of you guys for the support. Holy smokes, we are almost at 2,200 subscribers. Unbelievable. You guys are absolutely crushing it. I can't thank you guys enough. Thank you very much. Now, like I do at the end of video, every video, this is going to be the weapon build for the crossbow that I used today to run through the Dark Ether. So if you guys want to work together in the comments below to come up with any changes needed for the crossbow so we have an amazing crossbow weapon to run inside of our Modern Warfare 3 Zombies games. All right, thank you so much for tuning in and we'll catch you guys in the next one.